Let me show you how I practice gun laser engraving using completely fake slide parts. A couple months back, I posted this video showing you how I have these fake slides made and we engraved an example in stainless steel. The video did really well. Thanks for watching if you checked it out. And if you haven't, you should go watch it. So today we're back for round number two. And if you make it to the end of this video, I have a really important question for you. So let's get started. Step number one, let's talk blanks. For this round, we'll be engraving our design on these fake anodized aluminum slide blanks. I had these made alongside the stainless steel ones from the first video, and I haven't gotten around to trying them out yet. If you're not familiar with the material, underneath this black coating is a piece of aluminum, and our goal is to engrave away the black coating to reveal a nice, bright, white, contrasting mark. Since I had these custom made, I already have the template files ready. I just needed to come up with a new design. Next, let's take a look at the artwork we're going to be engraving today. I'm a big fan of the whole Aztec Mayan theme you'll often see engraved on slides and grips and stuff like that. And I've never done one before, so I tried my hand at designing my own. It came out all right. Um, and here you can see all five, technically six pieces that we're going to be engraving. So these are all parts, different parts of that practice slide. Uh, we got the front side with the slot here, the top corner that's separated on top of the slot, the top with the slot, whoops, cut out, the long corner in the back, and then this would be the reverse side where there is no slot at all. It's just one long panel to engrave on. If there's anyone out there who's interested in learning how to create graphics like this, leave a comment in the comment section below, and if enough people are interested, I will go ahead and do kind of like a walkthrough tutorial on how you can create these dense collage style graphics that look great on knives and gun parts and all that stuff. But just know that it's really just a whole lot of, um, it's really just a whole lot of layering, finding graphics. I buy a lot of graphic packs on Etsy for like $1.50. I find things on Google and I image trace them and just kind of create my own little scenes here and uh, pop everything into place and get it ready for engraving. So. With that being said, let's move over into Lightburn and set up our job. All right, so I just imported my artwork into Lightburn, which is of course my laser software of choice whenever I'm not using an Xtool product. And if your laser is compatible with Lightburn and you're still not using it, well, I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, let me show you how I set up my files, prep them for engraving, and then we'll go over the settings that I'm gonna use for this engraving work. So starting with how I like to lay out my graphics, First thing I will do is set an outside line, an outside tool layer around the perimeter of the material that I'm engraving. So I measured the I measured the practice slides. I know exactly how long they are and exactly how tall they are. So what I do is I set my tool layer to be that exact exterior width, edge to edge. And then what I like to do is I will create another tool layer. I don't know how Hard, uh, how hard this is to see, but there's a, a thinner blue tool layer which lines up with the edges of my artwork, which should be about one millimeter, um, one millimeter offset inside. And what I'll do is I will do a rough alignment under the, uh, under the laser using my first tool layer. And then once I'm pretty happy with how it looks, I will turn off that tool layer and then I'll turn on the blue one, which is the bounds of my artwork. And then that's where I like to do all the fine de uh, the fine positioning. I might have to move the, the practice slide a little bit, or maybe I'll nudge the graphics here in Lightburn, but that's really where I, I uh, dial in exactly where I want this engraved. And especially when I'm working with these long, these long graphics where if I'm off by a little bit, it's gonna show. So I have to make sure everything is dialed in perfectly. So you'll see each one of my pieces here they have both of those tool layers. And this is something I talk about a lot in my beginner light burn fiber laser course, fiber laser ignite, where you know we go over a lot of basic projects and you'll see that this is exactly the same system I use to lay out all of my artwork in the course as well. Okay, so now, one really important thing I have to do because I'm engraving on an anodized surface, which means I'm engraving on a dark material, and whenever you're engraving on a dark material, what you have to do is invert your artwork so that the black areas still show up as black and the white areas still show up as white. 
And to do that, I'm going to select everything in my um, engraving layer, which is my black layer here, by holding down Shift and clicking on the layer up in the Layers panel. And then I'm going to go to Tools, Offset Shapes, and then I'm going to do a zero offset inwards. And what this is going to do is, it's, you see how everything flipped there? That's what it looks like normally. And then when we do the offset, it flips all the colors. So now when I engrave this on my anodized surface, all of the graphics are going to look correct. Next, let's talk about settings. So let me open up my settings panel here for my engraving layer. So I'm using a 60 watt JPT MOPA fiber with a 200 millimeter lens, okay? And the speed I'm going to be engraving at is 2000 millimeters a second, a max power of 35, a frequency of 50, and a Q pulse default 200. My line interval is going to be 0 0.025, uh, bi-directional, crosshatch on, scan degree at 45 degrees, doesn't really matter, and just one pass. So it's going to do it one way, and then it's going to do it the other way. And that's, that's all you need for anodized. I love engraving this anodized material because it goes so much faster than when you're trying to engrave brass or steel or something really hard. All you need is two passes on this, and you're good to go. All right, and I click OK. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through, and you're going to see me set up each piece. We're going to run the engraving. I'll uh, switch it over to the next piece, run the engraving, and then we'll see what it looks like at the end. All right, let's take a look at our finished result. Overall, I'm really happy with the way this came out. Here's a look at the front side, top, 
and then the back. Nothing too surprising about this project, being that I already had the template file done. So here's the stainless steel version I did in the first video. I already had the shape, so all I had to do was load in some new graphics. One thing I will change for the next round is I don't like how thick this border, this corner border is. This should be quite a bit thinner this, the way this one is here. See how much smaller that is? I just find it's a little bit too, a little bit too much. So for the next round, I'm gonna raise the graphics up a little bit higher on the top and on the sides. I'm gonna shrink this corner border design. And then from there, that should be the sweet spot. Let's wrap things up with my question to you. In the first video, I gave a link to this template and I showed you exactly how you could have your own fake practice slides made the same way I did here. And apparently a lot of people followed through with that. But the big issue with ordering this way is since they're done in small batches, the per unit cost is pretty high, I understand. So my question to you is if I were to pursue a bulk order of both the stainless steel version and the anodized aluminum version so I can get that per unit cost down, would you potentially be interested in ordering them from me? I'd also give you the template files so you can work on creating your own designs and not have to worry about measuring everything because I've already done it. And I'd probably create a couple pre-made designs so you can just throw them in there and try it out. So if you might be interested, please leave a comment in the comment section below, or you can send me an email or message me on Facebook just to let me know. And if there's enough interest, I will pursue this. And if there's no interest, we won't. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can also leave those in the comment section below, and I'll catch you next time.